So this is um, my presentation. I'm going to introduce what we do and how we do it and why it is important. So why, like what is really motivation for our work? So Habana Labs is the company which produce microprocessors. It's not CPU, it's not GPU, it's a specifically AI targeted processor or neural processor, if you will. And the motivation why it is important is that it has been predicted that more and more workloads will be in the field of AI. Um, so it is predicted that the growth of AI will be over 30% per year. And um, <clears throat> in 2026, more than one third of all, all workloads in all data centers will be AI in deep learning. And um, it's extremely uh, heavy workloads which takes a lot of time, a lot of resources, and we decided to address this uh, problem. Uh, so not only that the task is very heavy, it's also a very repetitive task. Models get more complicated, you want to retrain, you get new data, you want to retrain, and uh, if you find how you can tweak your accuracy and actually get better uh, AI models, you again want to retrain. So. In many cases, you need to run many, many iterations. And in many cases, you need to rebuild weekly. In some cases, you need to rebuild daily. Um, okay, so what hardware you can use for addressing AI workloads, both training and inference. And AI usually consists of two steps. First, you train your model and then you deploy it. Using, using for inference. So on the bottom is the CPU, and the CPU is the old well-known processor, uh, <clears throat> central processing unit, uh, which every laptop or desktop has uh, one of these, or maybe even several. So CPU is very flexible. You can use it for many different applications. It does a lot of tasks, but it's not particularly well or efficient for deep learning tasks. Next step, and you can see it in the recent years, um, graphics processing uh, processors actually were repurposed for the, uh, for the uh, target of training or running inference for AI workloads. And GPU is more specific. It's not as flexible as CPU. So at the top, thank you, sir. Okay, so at the top, uh, there are dedicated processors. Dedicated processors are ones which specifically designed for AI, and um, um, they only target AI applications. They can, used, they can be used for something uh, else, but this is not their design. And essentially, this is, this is our processor is in the upper category, and this is the dedicated AI processor. Okay, so um, I would like to give very short introduction. What is really the difference between CPU, GPU, and AI processor? And so you can see here on the right screen is the matrix operation done by CPU. CPU is really a scalar processor. It means it can operate on a single number, single variable, which is really a scalar. And for it's, it's very flexible, you can do anything you want, but if you try to apply it to matrix calculation as a case for tensor operation, you can see that this is extremely inefficient. You need to, you need to iterate for each element of each row, each element of each, of, of, of each column, and you, you need to accumulate your data and put it into the output, and this is very, very inefficient, and because of the CPU usually don't perform really well, for task of deep learning training and inference. So GPU in the middle were created for processing graphics information. So graphics is, can be paralyzed, and if you split the big matrix into small tiles, then you can process every tile separately. So when you process every type, every tile separately, you actually uh, see um, then you can speed up because you can do it in parallel, but you need also to do some extra work. It requires stitching. It requires when you stitch, you need to do extra work also. Similar to CPU, when you want to parallelize and actually 
uh, split your work not inside one processor, but maybe among many processors, both CPU and GPU do not have networking capabilities on a chip. So for AI chip, the main idea, first of all, we would like to implement tensor processing on a chip. So we have a really hardware and hardware implemented a tensor processor, which means that we can do operations like A times B plus C, uh, where A, B, and C would be multidimensional tensors. We can do it in, in the hardware. And also we have networking capabilities on the chip. So um, our first generation Gau uh, processor called Gaudi, this is how it looks in the, in the center. You can see the processor. It has four banks of HBM memory. Everything is packaged on the board, and this is a mezzanine form factor. And we produce servers which include eight processors of, of this type on a server. So I will go a little bit into the architecture of this uh, processor. So as I said, for matrix multiplications, for tensor operations, we have an MME, with, which is matrix multiplication engine. This engine can do linear operations. Linear operations are operations that A times B plus C, where A, B, and C are not scalars, but tensors up to fifth dimension of very large size. We don't need to iterate element by element. We don't need to split tensor into small blocks and process them in parallel and then stitch them. Everything can be done on MME, which, is, which can be reduced to linear matrix multiplication. For cases which are not linear matrix multiplication, we have eight TPCs, and TPCs are tensor processing cores. So, uh, I, okay, this is the, yeah, this is the TPCs. So these TPCs can perform element-wise operation. It can perform nonlinear operations. Everything, every TPC has their own uh, local memory, but also they connect it to fairly large size cache. And this is the shared memory in the middle, and this is shared memory uh, shared between MME and TPC. So all of them can work in unison on calculations, and essentially um, all work can be spread between these eight parallel cores in the matrix multiplication engine, and they communicate to each other through the shared memory. Okay, one very important feature, we have 10 ports of 100 gigabit each on the chip. So we don't need any external network cards, nothing. Everything can be communicated through the chip itself. It's extremely powerful communication network implemented on the chip. For the first generation Gaudi, we have four banks of eight gigabit each, totaling 32 GB. We have PCIe, DMA, and so on. Okay, so no hardware is good without software, you know. And so we have also designed the software stack from the beginning, even though we are a hardware company, majority of um, engineers for our company are software engineers. So we already included in Linux kernels maybe for two, three years now. If you have Habana hardware on your uh, server, on your computer, then the Linux kernel will automatically recognize this and load into Linux kernel. Uh, we have a graph compiler. Graph compiler is responsible for taking user-defined uh, network and compiling into set of instructions which can run on our processor. We have also communication library. In many cases, um, you want to split. You don't want to train your model for weeks or, I don't know, days. Essentially, you would like, if you have several servers, if you have several processors, you want to do it in hours or minutes. And essentially, you need to split and have communication. So for this, we have Habana communication library, which makes it very straightforward and easy to communicate and make it in parallel. We have thousands of optimized kernels, and these are um, um, special functions which run on our hardware for all common layers you can find in uh, common networks. Also, we have very good set of tools. If a user has their own models, 
their own operators, which are not very common. We have an um, integrated environment that you can actually write your own model in C++. And we have LLVM-based compiler, which will com compile your model into our code, into binary code run on our architecture. And whatever model you write and compile will be included in the user uh, library. We have a normalization layer, which translate common API from PyTorch and TensorFlow into our API calls. And this is really our software stack. Okay. So to demonstrate how it is it, it is to, to move from, uh, let's say, uh, generic TensorFlow into uh, TensorFlow run on our uh, processor, it will only require two lines of code change for TensorFlow. You just include you import our library and you register our device. So the second operation will kind of run and we'll see if the Habana device is installed on your system. It will actually find and optimize all operations which can be accelerated on the AI processor will run on our device and not on CPU. Similar for PyTorch, it's actually four lines of code if you would like to run it. On PyTorch, um, this is the PyTorch lighting. If you would like to run it distributed, again, very trivial, few lines or even words of code change. And uh, currently, Hugging Face is a company which specializes in transformers. And we are completely integrated with, with Hugging Face. First, we had models optimized for Hugging Face in our uh, domain like on Habana domain, but now it's so common we even eliminate it. You take anything from Hugging Face, it will it is already optimized for Habana. They have links um, for optimized models, and there are many of them on Hugging Face running on our devices. Okay, so we have also um, um, the entire environment and ecosystem. So. If you would like to see, we have uh, tens, it's kind of nearing hundreds of models which currently optimize uh, to run on our processors. You can find it in Habana GitHub. We have developer side, we have training tutorials, we have manuals how user model can be translated, optimized um, or imported into our uh, hardware. Um, okay. So what about our training performance? So we compare ourselves with best, absolutely most powerful processors currently exist in the market. And currently the best processors are from NVIDIA, A100 and V100. A100 is the newest generation processor. It's a server grade processor. And so Habana is here in the middle, okay? So we can see that Habana also, because we were a startup, when we developed our first processor, we didn't use the most advanced technology because we didn't want to take too much risk. We, uh, we came with a new processor architecture. We didn't want to try new processor architecture plus the most cutting edge of the transistor processor. So we used 16 nanometer processor, which was the mainstream at our time. So we can see that Compared with V100 from NVIDIA, which is more advanced than, uh, it's actually 12 nanometers, so it's more advanced processor technology and transistor technology than ours, we'll still beat this processor from NVIDIA significantly. And then the next processor, A100, is 7 nanometer, which is significantly better technology than ours. And essentially, we're very close to this performance. So we get our performance not because of more advanced and larger number of transistors. Instead, that our chip is better architected for these particular workloads. Okay, so um, we also see, and this is kind of unique, that because we have such powerful capabilities on our chip for communication, we observe linear scaling. In some cases, we observe super linear scaling, meaning that if you, multi if you split your job and you run it on n number of processors, sometimes speed up is n, virtually n without any degradation. We did observe in some cases it can exceed n because 
maybe there are some secondary order effect. For example, you don't need to send much message in communication. Sometimes we see that splitting an N, you actually get N plus performance in uh, gain in performance, which is unique and unusual. And before we made these claims, we actually double check that everything is actually done correctly because it's kind of um, very unusual. So you can see here virtually for bird large, and this is from deep speed, you can see literally uh, linear scaling. Uh, we also recently, the CEO of Intel, uh, Pat Gelsinger, presented this diffusion model running on our processor and his latest keynote. We, 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 we actually can uh, run this is very heavy model and we can run it. I think it's like world record for the performance for, for these models. Okay, so we are uh, targeting several vertical, uh, several vertical niches in the market. So we are very good for the computer vision, uh, image classification, NLPs and so on, object detection. So in all these verticals, we actually have some customers and the list is growing. Okay, so uh, currently, and this is also a um, very kind of uh, indication of importance of this chip, we are available on AWS. And this is one of a few categories which you can find in AWS. If you go to AWS and you try to reserve a node, you can get a CPU node, you can get a GPU node, and as of several months, maybe almost a year, you can also get a node with Habana Labs processor installed, and it's called DL1. In addition, we partner with Supermicro and DDN. DDN is the data uh, company, data storage company, so we produce servers which can be placed on premises, and usually when you do a lot of training and in many cases a lot of inference, you need to have a lot of storage before your data sets or maybe sometimes feeding. So we partner with these companies and you can have many different architectures. You can have different proportion of compute node versus storage node. And, and so this is, this is the second opportunity for if you want to deploy it on a premises. Okay, and this is the slide I, I took from the DDN uh, presentation. And um, this is one of the reference architectures, which has four uh, compute nodes for Gaudi and one st uh, storage from uh, DDN. Okay, and this is example, uh, comparison, price comparison on DL1. DL1 is the Amazon AWS instance. We are not cheaper because we don't sell it for cheap. It's, it's because we are higher performing. Our chip is dedicated for deep learning. We can do things much more efficiently. And because of this efficiency, the price performing uh, can be transferred to customers. It's not that the you will reserve the node for less money than competition. It's that it will do the work faster. You don't need to pay for it that much. Okay. So Gaudi one was introduced, um, I think uh, maybe a year and a half or so, and uh, ago and in summer of this year, actually in May we made an announcement, but as of now, this is um, available. And this is the second generation of our processor. Once we confirmed that this uh, new architecture is successful, and even using a relatively stable processor gives us very good performance. We actually uh, developed the Gaudi 2 processor, which is on the most modern architecture. So what is interesting is that uh, the, first, the first processor was developed on 16 nanometer. We went to seven nanometers. We have 24 TPC tensor processing cores instead of eight. Uh, we added new data type. By the way, we support many different data types. We support different, um, different resolution, integer, int8, int16, int32, uh, sign and unsigned, uh, BF16, uh, F, uh, FP32. To all of this, we also added FP8 of different flavors and it's different distribution of Mendelssohn exponent. 
we have much more memory and we improve memory bandwidth and instead of 10 ports of 100 gigabit each we have 24 port of uh, 100 gigabit each we have 2.4 terabit per second communication on a chip so it's actually it's on a chip an extremely powerful device um, the power is grown from 350 watt per chip to 600 but it's still air cooled so it still can be air cooled we don't need a liquid cooling for this chip it's a passive air cooled okay compared with the architecture of the chip i showed before it shows evolutionary change so we have much more memory instead of 32 gb we have 96 which is also industry uh, i think industry leader we have two different MMEs instead of one, which can work on different um, parts of the task. We increase the uh, uh, shared memory from 24 to 48. As I said, we have 24 TPCs. We added media engine. So media engine, if you, for example, feed some encoded video or encoded streams, we actually can decode it uh, for many different formats on the chip. You don't need to use CPU. We found out that in many cases, if you use these powerful processors and you try to feed some video, then in many cases, CPU, even the most powerful CPU will become a bottleneck. So our processor it will idle or not work to full potential because even to data in that out, which is done on CPU, will not be fast enough to satisfy performance of this chip. So we added special hardware on the chip, which actually uh, does the video encoding, decoding on the chip, uh, which actually takes this work from CPU and then performance becomes much higher. And we have 24, as I said, uh, ports. This is one of the reference applications, excuse me, reference servers. So this is already server type diagram. It shows that we have eight processors on the chip excuse me, on, on the, on, in the system, we connected all of them all to all. So every processor has 24 ports for communication, 21 ports goes all to all to seven neighbors, like three, three goes to every neighbor on the board. And then there are three additional from each chip goes outside for scale up. Okay. So, now, what is interesting for this product is that first time, actually NVIDIA usually is the best, absolutely king of performance for all tasks for deep learning. First time in history, we actually we broke and um, this record and uh, this chip outbeats the best performing chip from NVIDIA. And so this is the graph for the, for the performance. And it's not even our um, press coverage. It was that NVIDIA finally loses the crown for the high, highest performing chip for artificial intelligence. And this is example of um, how our chips are compared to NVIDIA. So there is a first generation Gaudi and second generation Gaudi too. And NVIDIA chips are sandwiched. Green is NVIDIA, blue is ours. So we are roughly 2x from the best currently processor from NVIDIA. Similar performance from LP, yeah. I have like three minutes. Okay, it's available from different vendors, so it's not only from Supermicro, but Inspur. So essentially, and we collaborate with different uh, partners. Any questions so far? 